Hello friends, welcome to CEC Live Lectures. Dear friends, with our ongoing series on quantum chemistry, today we are going to talk on uh, three-dimensional box uh, as well as uh, on free particles. So this is the topic of today's discussion and for the discussion on the topic, we have with us in our studios Dr. Amita Dua. Dr. Amita Dua is Assistant Professor in the Department of uh, Chemistry, the Singh College, University of Delhi. Dr. Dua is author of uh, a book on quantum chemistry and uh, she continuously and persistently makes effort so that uh, she could uh, reach the students community as a whole through her knowledge through her experiences so friends let's welcome our guest dr amita dua and try to understand today's topic in detail that is three dimensional box uh, and free particles hello ma'am welcome thank to the hello hello to all my viewers uh, in the last few lectures we have discussed about uh, the wave function that is what is wave function the postulates of quantum mechanics and then uh, we have discussed about the we were discussing about the translational motion of a particle in the translational motion of particle we have uh, uh, discussed that is the uh, the particle which is moving in one dimensional box and after that we have also discussed about the two dimensional box and today i'll try to complete the, the particle which is moving in a three dimensional box as well as that instead of that bounded state that is 1D or 2D or 3D instead of that we will also discuss about the free particle that is if there is no boundation on the particle then what would be its energy and the wave function and all those things. So before starting the three dimensional box first I will uh, uh, a bit of it I will revise about that what expressions do we get in two dimensional box because in two dimensional box also we have got two cases that is the rectangular box as well as the square box and similarly in the three dimensional box we have two cases that is cuboidal as well as cuboid. So that is why I just want to revise the two dimensional box so that you can uh, by revising it you can better link between uh, these two boxes the calculations in fact it becomes more easier for anyone. Now particle in a one dimensional box it serves as the simplest case for the treatment of the bounded electrons in atoms and molecules because the particle is uh, bound in that boundary conditions that is where the length of the box was 0 to a and that was the simplest case and there we have calculated the energy of the particle as well as the wave function of the particle. Now we will discuss about first I will revise about the two dimensional box. Now in case of two dimensional box in case of one dimensional box there was only one length that is a we have only taken that the length of the box was 0 to a but in this case we have two cases. First is the rectangular box where, the, where there is one is length and other is breadth that is A as well as B and then after that that is in the second case I will discuss about the square box where, where both the length and the breadth is same. So first I have two dimensional rectangular box in the two dimensional rectangular box uh, the H operator what is the H operator because always initially we have to write the Hamiltonian the expression for the Hamiltonian and then we uh, jump on to the Schrodinger equation and after writing the Schrodinger equation we always try to get the energy as well as the wave function this is what actually we do in quantum mechanics. So in the Hamiltonian part because there are two uh, this thing that is length as well as breadth so there are two coordinates that is x as well as y the electron is moving or the particle is moving in, in 2D that is there are two coordinates that is x and y. So my h operator that is Hamiltonian operator would become minus h cross square upon 2m in the bracket del square x del x square plus del square y del z square and plus the potential energy. Always initially we have to write both the total energy that is the kinetic energy as well as potential energy and after that we will discuss and then we will decide whether the potential energy is 0 or infinity or whatever because in different different cases we have different kind of potential energy with us. And in particle in a box case my potential energy that is whenever the particle is inside the box my potential energy is 0. So that is a different case. Now first of all we have to write the Schrodinger equation my Hamiltonian is this thing in two dimension and my Schrodinger equation is H operator equals to the E operator. I will put the expression of H operator this will become minus H cross square 2m. Uh, simply I will put the expression for the uh, kinetic energy in this Hamiltonian plus Vx although V depends upon three coordinates because we have two dimension case so I am simply writing V in the brackets x comma y into psi equals to e psi. Now next now the Schrodinger equation 
Now we have to discuss two cases as usual as we have done in case of one dimension that is when the particle is inside that 2D box, the rectangular box and when the particle is outside or on the walls of the 2D box. So the Schrodinger equation when the particle is outside the box, whenever the particle is outside the box or on the walls of the container, my potential energy is infinity. So I'll put this infinity value that is V equals to infinity in this that is minus H cross square upon 2M in the brackets as simple as that I have just put it V equals to infinity and then on rearranging that is I'm taking E on the uh, the minus H square upon 2M and E infinity psi on the other side. So by that minus sign get vanished this will become H square upon 2M in the brackets. You can see on the slide I am not telling all the calculations because I am just revising this I have already done in the last lecture just to uh, make the 3D box easier that is why I am repeating this in few minutes. So this will become E minus infinity equals to 0. Now E is very much less than infinity so simply it will become H cross square in the brackets minus infinity psi equals to 0. I will divide because I have to make this as a differential equation so I will divide throughout by h cross square by 2m. So by dividing this h cross my expression will become what? That is del square psi del x square plus del square psi del x by square into psi the term which was already multiplied that will get vanished. So this will become minus 2m h cross square into infinity psi. Anything multiplied by infinity will ultimately becomes infinity. So this is the expression the second expression you can see minus infinity. And when I solve this equation, my psi comes out to be 0. So this is the same case, nothing different. It is the same case what we have done in the one dimensional box in the earlier classes. That is whenever the particle is present in 1D box, whenever the particle is present, sorry, outside the box or on the walls of the container, my wave, my potential energy is infinity. And on solving this differential equation, my wave function comes out to be 0 that is particle whether it is present in 1D or in 2D the particle is not present outside the box its existence is zero on the walls as well as outside the box. Now we have to write the Schrodinger equation when the particle is inside the box. So this will become that is uh, whenever the particle is inside the box my potential energy is zero. So in that case my Schrodinger equation would become minus h cross square upon 2m in the brackets del square x del y square into psi plus 0 into psi equals to e psi. By this my 0 factor whenever anything is multiplied by 0 finally it becomes 0. So the, that uh, potential energy becomes 0 I have put a cross on it and uh, what is left is minus h cross square upon 2m del del square del x square plus del square del y square into psi equals to e psi. So now dividing throughout I have taken this minus sign on the other side. So this is the equation with a positive sign and then dividing throughout by h cross square upon 2m so that I get a differential equation. So this is the differential equation that is del square psi del x square del square psi del y square plus 2me upon h cross square psi equals 0. Now by this you can see that there are two coordinates x as well as y and the, we, I have got a partial differential equation where there are two coordinates and it is very difficult to solve this. So to solve this equation uh, the Schrodinger equation for a two dimensional box I have to cut it cut short down into, into two parts. Into two parts I have to and for that I have to apply the separation of the technique which is known as separation of variables. By the technique of separation of variables, uh, by this we separate the x factor a separate thing and a y factor in a different component that is I am dividing the whole equation which is containing x and y into separate two equations that is one containing the x component and the other containing the y component. And for this I have to uh, make one assumption. So let us suppose my wave function which was psi and it depends upon the depending upon the coordinates x and y. Now it has uh, converted into capital X as well as capital Y. Now my wave function is no more psi it has become capital X and capital Y whereas the wave function capital X it depends upon the uh, coordinate small x whereas y it depends upon y. Now differentiating I will differentiate this thing that is d psi by dx and then del square psi by del x square. 
Similarly, because I have to put this differential in the main equation and then d psi by dy and then del square psi by del y square. Once I have got this expression for uh, del square psi and del x square as well as del square by del z square, once it is obtained you can see on the slide it is very, very clearly it is written that is the differential part is done on the slide. Once we have got this equation, put this into the Schrodinger equation. So, this will become y into del square x del x square x into del square y del y square plus as it is whatever it is written earlier that is 2me upon h cross square psi equals to 0. Now, I will divide the whole equation by xy that is a wave function. Earlier my wave function was psi. Now, my wave function is capital X into capital Y. I will divide this by capital X capital Y and that is a multiplication factor. So, my y gets cancelled and I got 1 upon x del square x del x square and then 1 upon y del square y del y square plus 2me upon h cross square equals to 0. Now, once this is obtained, I have separated by this you can see that I have separated the wave function psi into x as well as y. Now, I will break this equation the second last equation which you can see on the slide. Now, I am breaking up into two components. So it is 1 upon x del square x del x square plus this thing. I am putting this as equal to minus k square and also I am taking the energy factor that is 2me upon h cross square on the other side. So, this will become minus 2me upon h cross square where k square is a constant and the sum of the two terms on the left hand side is also a you can say that because the right hand side if, if the right hand side is a constant then obviously your left hand side would also be a constant. So, now I am separating that is 1 upon x del square x del x square equals to because it is what I have put it is minus k square the constant. So, this will become 1 upon x del square x del x square equals to minus k x square. Similarly, 1 upon y del square y del x y square equals to minus k y square. And also you can see that the energy was minus 2 me upon h cross square equals to minus k square. So, when I am equating the energy with k square, the two negative sign would get cancelled. So, thus my energy would be 2 me e x upon h cross square equals to k x square and 2 me y h cross square equals to k y square. So, this is how I have separated the equation. Now, I am equating uh, the on total this would be minus k x square minus k y square as usual because I have just divided into two parts. So, this will become minus k x square minus k y square equals to minus k square and similarly once I take a negative sign out this would become k x square plus k y square equals to simply k square. So, this is how I have separated the k's as well as energy. Now, to get the two equations separate is that is first I will take the this thing the differential part that is 1 upon x del square x del x square plus the energy part as usual that is 2me x upon because I have separated it I have taken uh, ex and ey equal to the different constants that is kx and ky. So, you can also divide the two equations into two parts like 1 upon x del square x del x square plus 2me x upon h cross square equals to 0 and similarly 1 upon y del square y del y square equals to 0. Now, these are the two equations uh, and what you can see that that these equations are just similar to the equation like that of particle in a box. The only difference is that in particle in a box in case of 2D box, we have wave function as capital X and capital Y. Whereas, in case of one dimensional box, I have only one wave function that is psi. No separation was done. But here, I have done the separation into two parts that is X as well as Y. So, the complex Schrodinger equation, it has been broken down into two simpler Schrodinger equations that is where uh, the length of the box in one of them the length of the box is A and in the another one the length of the box is B. So, my answer would be the answer would be same because we are not going to solve uh, here that how 
the normalization and all those things are done. So simply my answer would be capital X that is the wave function equals to under root 2 by A sin nx pi x upon A and energy would be n square x square upon 8 m a square. The only thing is that instead of n I am taking nx that is x factor with this and the length of the box is A that is in the x coordinate whereas in the y coordinate the length of the box is B and I have instead of nx I have ny where nx and ny are the two quantum numbers for the two separate bo boxes and thus the two wave function would be psi depends upon x as well as y. You can also write the expression because when we have once we have obtained the expression for the different wave functions that is x as well as y we can also write the multiplication factor that is the wave function is always multiplicative in nature. So, this will become under root 2a into under root 2b it will become under root 4 upon a into b sin n pi x upon a sin n pi y upon b and the unit of wave function sin does not have any unit. So, my unit is because of a as well as b. So, this would be centimeter inverse because it is under root. So, this is centimeter to the power of minus half and then centimeter into uh, this. So, once the min, uh, half and half is multiplied this will become 1 and once it comes to the numerator this will become centimeter inverse and the dimension is L inverse. Always the wave function is multiplicative in nature whereas the energies are additive in nature. So, my total energy becomes Ex plus Ey and my energy would be because uh, take h square upon a term common and this will become nx square upon a square plus ny square upon b square. Now whenever my nx and ny equals to that is the levels that is this is the ground state level you can note that because they can always ask you a question in the paper that calculate the ground state energy of the particle in a uh, two dimensional box the ground state energy. Uh, in a rectangular in a two dimensional square box or in a two dimensional rectangular box. So, what would be my answer is that put nx equals to ny equals to 1 that corresponds to the lowest ground state energy that is we can also write as E1 of a particle in two dimensional box. Also you can once you have calculated the wave function we can also calculate the probability my probability is always psi square. So, here in case this case this will become x square into y square and this is how the rectangular box is solved. And uh, here because we have two different lengths that is a as well as b. So, there are no more cases for this thing. We simply have nx and ny equals to 1 because it is a bit complicated case to solve all those things. So, there is only the ground state energy whenever the particle is present in a uh, rectangular box. But once we reach the two dimensional box that is the square box we have length and breadth equal to equal length and breadth that is simply without uh, that is we do not have a and b but now we have only one thing that is one length the length and breadth is equal obviously in the case of everyone knows in case of square this will become h cross square upon a term nx square ny square upon a square. And this is the wave function instead of a b I have a square. But now in this case we have so many this thing the levels the different kind of energies you can see in the square box where the particle is moving. So my lowest energy would be when nx equals to ny equals to 1. So this will be h square 8 m a square 1 plus 1 that is 2 h square upon 8 m a square and this is just double the energy of a particle because in case of uh, particle in one dimensional box my energy was n square h square upon 8 m a square and once n is 1 this becomes h square upon 8 m a square and now in case of square box that is when there are two levels that is nx equals to 1 and ny equals to 1. So, we can represent as E11 the symbol you can see because we have many uh, different kinds of energies that is why I have written E11 this will become 2 h square upon 8 m a square and it is seen that the energy is 2 times that for a particle in a one dimensional box whose length was A. Now, also the corresponding wave function would be that is because nx and ny is 1 so, the wave function corresponding to every energy there is a corresponding wave function. 
So my wave function that is psi 1 1 will become 4 upon a square sin nx and ny is 1 to so pi x by a into sin pi y by a. Now the next higher energy level that is the excited ones is that is when my quantum number is the nx and ny is 2 1. So there would be two cases either nx equals to 2 and ny equals to 1 or nx equals to 1 and nx equals to 2. The both the probabilities are there. So my energy value would be either it could be e21 or it could be e12. So how the but you can see that although there are two cases but the energy for both of them is equal. So this is levels these are the different levels which are existing in a particular state. My state is 2 and 1 my levels are 1 2 or 2 1. So each state of this energy have the same energy. So e21 or 1 2 my answer comes out to be 5 h square upon 8 m square for every energy we have a particular wave function for every energy. So my wave function would be psi although the energy is same although there are two things which are having different energies but the wave function is different for all of them for every energy for the, there is a corresponding wave function. So we calculate psi 2 1 as well as psi 1 2 separately. Now uh, my so th this is known as level and within a level uh, further I will show one of the diagram where I have shown the, the concept of levels as well as states. Uh, so this is level and within a level there are different states. So the different wave functions which are corresponding to same energy that is the energies are same but the wave functions are different are known as degenerate states. So one thing is level and another one is state and the energy value is known as degenerate level or degenerate energy and the phenomena is known as degeneracy. So in case of 2 1 and 1 2 my state is doubly degenerate which is the degree of degeneracy or I can also say that it is twofold degenerate. So my next energy level is nx equals to 2 and ny equals to 2. So in this case there is nothing like degeneracy that is there is only one and one level that is uh, this will become 2 square plus 2 square this will become 8 h square upon 8 ma square and uh, next level we can discuss that nx equals to 3 and ny equals to 1 or nx equals to 1 and ny equals to 3. So by this again you can put the values of nx and ny and we can calculate the energy as well as the corresponding wave function. This is the diagram which is the most important diagram which you can now uh, see on this uh, this thing slide that it here it is seen that we have the different that is 2 1 and, and 1 2 are the states but a particular line is a level that is within a level there are different states. So if there is a particular level then there are different states which are present in a level which have got the same energy which are known as degenerate states. So when it was 1 1 it was non-degenerate when it was 2 1 and 1 2 it is doubly degenerate because there are two states having same energy. Again when it is 2 2 it is non-degenerate when it is 3 1 and 1 3 again it is doubly degenerate. So it is seen that when nx equals to ny that is whenever uh, the two things are same like 2 2 or 1 1 there is nothing like degeneracy and when nx is not equal to ny like 2 1 1 2 then there is twofold degeneracy. And this degeneracy you can see only in case of square box. It is never ever seen in the case of rectangular box that is when A equals to B. Otherwise the length factor uh, will also interfere and you are not able to calculate anything. So the degeneracy is because of the symmetry of the square and if the symmetry is destroyed that is in the case of rectangular box the degeneracy would not occur. And thus we study the concept of degeneracy only in case of the uh, square box and not in case of the rectangular box. Now today uh, I will also do last time I have not done any kind of numerical problem in two dimensional box. Now I am also discussing two three numerical problems on the two dimensional box and then I will jump on to the three dimensional box you can see. Suppose there is a you can see the numerical on the slide suppose there is a square box whose length is 0.28 nanometer 
which is containing 6 electrons, applying the model of particle in a box, calculate delta E for the first excited state. Because there are 6 electrons, so in every level, in every molecular orbital, we can have 2 electrons. So this is E1, E2, E3, I have filled those 6 electrons. The last level which is filled is HOMO and the next level is LUMO, that is the lowest unoccupied. And when the electron jumps from HOMO to LUMO, for that you have to calculate delta E. Always N is taken to be the lower level. My A is 0.98 nanometer, I have converted into meter. My mass is mass of electron, H is the Planck's constant, C is the velocity of light and my delta E, I have already calculated this delta E, that is the difference between the two levels, I have a, uh, a direct formula, that is 2N plus 1 H square upon 8MA square. Now what is my N? My N is the lower level, that is the electron is jumping from 3 to 4, so my N is 3. So just by putting all the values, you can calculate delta E which comes out to be in joules. Now second question you can also see that benzene may be taken as a two dimensional box of side 0.4 nanometer. Compute the wavelength of radiation that can cause promotion of an electron from the ground to the first excited state. Again in benzene, there are six electrons. So electron can jump from three to four. The same numerical, there is no difference. In the earlier one, there was a molecule, but in this case, benzene is mentioned. Now, uh, you can also take, we have naphthalene. In case of this, it is a proper two-dimensional case. The length and breadth is given, that is 0.8 nanometer and 0.4. So, this would be my A and B. I have to calculate it, the wave number. In case of naphthalene, you can see the structure. We have 10 electrons. So, my electron will jump from N equals to 5 to 6. There is no difference and it is not difficult to solve this question. Simply my energy is nx square a square, ny square b square, h square upon a square. So simply we have to put first for n equals to 5 and then I have to subtract it from n equals to 6 and my answer will come. And once delta e is obtained, you can calculate v bar from it. Now, uh, we can also do one more numerical that write the Hamiltonian operator for a particle whose mass is m which is moving in a two dimensional box. This you have already done when I am uh, doing the Schrodinger equation. Although there are three coordinates but for the 2D box one coordinate that is z gets cancelled. So uh, I will discuss three dimensional box in the next session and uh, we have completed the two dimensional box. In fact I have revised the whole thing again with numericals so that you can understand the three-dimensional box in a better way. Thank you. With this note, thank you, ma'am. Thank you so very much for giving us this precious session on two-dimensional box. And dear friends, as Dr. Mitadua herself said, that we are going to cover three-dimensional box in our next session. So be with us and get uh, ready to learn more on three-dimensional box. We will be back after a short break. Thank you.
Hello friends, welcome back to this session. Friends, as you know that in our previous session we talked on a two-dimensional box. So, we have covered uh, with the two-dimensional box and uh, in this session we are going to talk on three-dimensional box. And for the discussion on the topic we have with us in our studios Dr. Amitha Dua. Dr. Amitha Dua is a professor of uh, chemistry. So, let's welcome our guest Dr. Dua and let's try to understand three-dimensional box. Hello ma'am, welcome to the lecture. Hello. Uh, so now we have finished the, the one dimensional box and two dimensional box in this in this session I'll try to complete uh, the three dimensional box we'll discuss three dimensional box the three dimensional box is as it is same as that of the two dimensional box but the only thing is that instead of two coordinates now now I have an extra coordinate that is z with me because uh, and the breadth the length breadth and height also comes into the picture which I'm taking as c and in this case there are two cases my case one is that particle is moving in three dimensional cuboidal box and like that of a, the box of a colgate you can see that is cuboidal where length breadth and height is different and the second is a cubical box like a cube like an ice cube so these are the two differences so my in the cube uh, in the cuboidal box I, a is not equal to b and it is not equal to c that is the length breadth and height are different whereas in case of uh, cubical box i have a equals to b equals to c now first we'll discuss the three dimensional cuboidal box in the cuboidal box as similar like that of rectangular box that is there were two length as well as one was length and other was breadth whereas in this case i have length breadth as well as height my Hamiltonian operator is minus h cross square upon 2m plus v x y z h psi e psi and I'll put this Hamiltonian in the Schrodinger equation. This will become minus h cross square uh, del square plus v x y z. Why? Because I have three coordinates. Now again the same thing that is we are first we'll solve the Schrodinger equation when the particle is outside the box everyone knows that answer will comes out to be zero why because particle whether it is present in 1d or 2d or 3d my potential energy will definitely comes out to be zero but just have a look on it because I just want to show you the calculations for 3d box because some of the uh, students think that it becomes more complicated whereas it is not complicated at all in fact it has become more easier to solve 3d and 2d box because in 1d box we have to do all the calculations that how the energy is obtained or how the wave function is obtained but in case of 2d 3d you are just rid of all those calculations you just have to write the results which we have obtained in the 1d box that is of the energy as well as that of the wave function so uh, my uh, the Schrodinger equation would become minus h cross square upon 2m and in the brackets it is del square del x square del square del y square plus del square del z square equals to infinity into psi why because my potential energy has become infinity equals to e psi again the same step I am uh, taking the minus sign as well as the infinity part on the right hand side and this will become h cross square upon 2m in the brackets psi plus e minus infinity psi equals to 0 my e is very much less than infinity and therefore once the energy is neglected my equation would become h cross square upon 2m del square whatever that is the Laplacian operator psi minus infinity into psi equals to 0 I will divide throughout by h cross square by 2m so uh, the same equation I have got that is the Laplacian operator into psi my Laplacian is del square del x square del square del y square plus del square del z square we can also write it as the Laplacian minus 2m upon h cross square infinity into psi equals to 0. Once anything is multiplied by infinity this will become infinity and when this equation is uh, solved involving this infinity factor my wave function comes out to be 0. So the only solution possible for the Schrodinger equation when the particle is outside the box or on the walls of the container even in the 3D box the answer comes out to be 0. Now I will discuss the second part that the Schrodinger equation when the particle is inside the box the same equation we are solving there is uh, no difference uh, I first I am writing the Schrodinger equation where my potential energy is 0 that zero factor would get cancelled there is no more potential energy so I am left with minus h cross square upon 2m in the bracket psi equals to e psi and then the minus factor I am taking that minus factor on the right hand side 
so I get this partial differential equation I divide this by h cross square by 2m so we are left with del square xi del x square del square xi del y square del square xi del z square plus 2me upon h cross square psi equals to 0. Now this is the Schrodinger equation for a particle in a box which is moving in a cubical in fact a cuboidal box where there is three different kinds of lens that is a b as well as c that is the length breadth and height is different. So my uh, how will you solve just like in case of two dimensional box I have solved that the whole equation I have uh, separated this main equation into two parts that is x as well as y. Similarly now I am splitting the whole wave function into three parts that is I am applying the technique of separation of variables that is my total wave function is x which depends upon the coordinate x and then y and then z. Now I will differentiate the thing that is differentiate x with respect to small x and then double differentiate it. Similarly y uh, the wave function with respect to y double differentiate it you can see del square side del y square and then z. So this is how we get three equations for the wave function. Once you have obtained this that is uh, the differential as well as the double differential. Now I will put this into the main Schrodinger equation because I have to separate the main Schrodinger equation into three parts. So this will become yz del square x del x square xz del square y del y square and xy del square z del x square plus 2me h cross psi equals to 0. Because I have to obtain three equations which contains only x or only y or only z I will divide this by x, y and z. So once it is divided this will become 1 by x del square x that you can see that just dividing uh, this thing uh, we get three equations we are going towards separating the equation into x as well as y as well as z just that in case of the 2d case. Now I will put this as minus k square and the same calculations that is x part equals to minus k square, the y part equals to minus k y square, the z part equals to minus k z square like this and the energy equals to k x square, k y square and k z square because already there was a negative sign. So what you are seeing is that there are there is no difference in the calculation for 2D and 3D. The only thing is that in 2D we have two dimension x we are dealing with x and y but in 3d we are dealing with x as well as y as well as z. So now uh, by the technique of separation of variables we have three Schrodinger equation that is 1 upon x del square x del x square plus 2me like this we have three equations. Once this is obtained uh, we will rearrange it and I will get rid of that x, y and z and these are the equations we can, which you can see on the slide. Instead of 2 I have got 3 equations in 3 dimensional box and every equation is just similar to the, to the 1 dimensional box. So by this we get the wave function that is x, y and z. These are the results which we have already obtained in the one dimensional box and these are the same results which we have applied in the three dimensional box that is instead of psi I have capital X, capital Y and capital Z and also the energies are similar in, in 1D box I was having N but here it is NX and NY and NZ. Now everyone knows that wave function is multiplicative in nature so I will multiply X into Y into z and my expression would be 8 because I am multiplying 2 into 2 into 2. So this would be 8 a b c and then sign all these things. This is just the repetition part. What is the unit of wave function for 3 dimensional box? Because there are 3 factor that is 1 by 2, 1 by 2 and 1 by 2. So this becomes 3 by 2. So centimeter to the power of minus 3 by 2 or my dimension is L to the power of minus 3 by 2 and energy is always additive in nature 
so my energy is ex plus ey plus ez and i just add all these energies and this is the energy now there is nothing like state or level in case of the cuboidal box why because it is not symmetrical my a b and c they are different values so there is uh, here we can only and only calculate the ground state energy that is my nx equals to ny equals to nz which is equal to 1 so my answer comes out to be whenever i put 1 1 1 so uh, this is the simplest case that is h square upon 8m square and instead of this you can put 1 1 and 1 also my probability everyone knows probability is the square of the wave function you can calculate so uh, uh, this is the case this is the similar case of two dimensional box when we are having uh, the rectangular case but now a different case that is the next case like in case of 2d we have got square here we have got whenever length breadth and height is same we have got cubical box so we are not discussing all the calculations because the calculations are same the only thing is that here we have Uh, the length breadth and height is same that is a equals to b equals to c so here we have got the concept of degeneracy so degeneracy is always seen whenever there is symmetry otherwise you can't see the degeneracy like we haven't seen degeneracy in case of rectangular case or cuboidal we have seen the degeneracy in case of square and now we can see in case of cubical box so now what are the different cases is um, that the total wave function obviously it would be the multiplicative in nature and then the lowest energy or the ground state energy would be whenever the three levels are equal that is nx equals to ny equals to nz n cannot be zero because we have already explained that n cannot be zero in case of the particle in a box so my lowest energy would be e111 so my energy comes out to be 3 h square upon 8 m square and this is thrice that of a particle in a box and my wave function would be again you can see i have put it nx ny and nz equals to 1 because for every energy there is a corresponding wave function now my next energy level would be 211 or 121 or 112 similarly we can calculate the energy so these are my level is my level is nx2 211 is my level but just by reshuffling i have got three states within the same within the same level i have three states that is 211 121 and 112 having the same energy that is they are degenerate states and for every state i have a particular wave function that is 211 121 1 and 122 this you can see on the slide the expression for the wave functions as well as the energies are given now my next higher energy level would be you can also take a 221 or 212 and 122 these are the different cases similarly we can calculate energy as well as wave function again my next level would be 222 this cannot be degenerate in similarly i can also take 311 so these are the different things we can calculate only in case of the cuboidal that sorry in the case of cuboid not in you cannot see all these things in case of cuboidal so uh, this is the diagram which is showing the states as well as the level this is 111 one, one and all these things which we have calculated and thus it is concluded that the same conclusion that when the three things were equal that is nx equals to ny equals to nz there was no degeneracy like 2 2 2 or 3 3 3 or 4 4 4 or 1 1 1 whenever one of them is different or the two are different when one is different there is three fold degeneracy and when all of them are different then i have got three fold degeneracy like i have 1 2 3 uh, all of them are different then in that case we have got although it's not shown over here in the diagram but uh, you can uh, calculate this uh, that whenever the three levels are different i have got six fold degeneracy so always the degeneracy is because of the symmetry of the 
thing now i'll discuss uh, the few problems which is based on particle in three dimensional box suppose the problem is what is the unit of wave function in a three dimensional box this is one of the very common question which is given to the st uh, students in the exam so the this factor that is you can see the slide my sign factor doesn't have any unit so always the unit of the wave function is because of the lengths which are there and i have got three lengths that is a b and c everyone is centimeter and because they are in under root so instead of q this will become that is 1 by 2 that is 3 by 2 and when it comes in the numerator this becomes minus 3 by 2 now the second question is calculate the degeneracy of a particle in a three dimensional uh, box in a three dimensional box having length a and energy is equal to 9h square so for this you have to make an idea then when will you get this value 9 just by squaring by hit and trial method you have to see so 9 will come when nx and ny and nz is in the ratio 2 is to 2 is to 1 so it is triply degenerate now the third question is suppose we have a particle whose uh, length is a what is the degeneracy of the level that has energy 3 times the lowest energy that what would be my value so that my answer comes out to be thrice as that we got in bundy box and also write the mathematical expression so the lowest energy would be uh, when nx equals to ny equals to nz equals to 1 and my energy value would be e111 so the energy is in this case the energy is 3 times and my expression would be uh, this is the case and also i'm calculating now the second is what is the degeneracy of the level that has energy 3 times write the mathematical expression for the degenerate wave functions so because i have 1 1 1 uh, now for a particle of mass m the next question now for every energy level one can always write the wave function for a particle of mass m in a cube whose length is l the energy is 17 h square upon this what are the quantum numbers so it means usually the quantum numbers are given and we have to calculate the energy in this case the energy is calculated and we have to give the quantum numbers so for answer to be 17 what would be my values of nx ny and nz there would be 3 2 and 2 so once you put 3 square 2 square and 2 square answer comes out to be this thing now my uh, next is that a particle of mass m it is in a three dimensional box whose length is a breadth is b and height is c the potential energy it varies from this formulate the schrodinger equation this is the same question this is the same in fact derivation which we have done in the theoretical part which I, which i have derived it so i just want to tell you the question what kind of questions you can come across in the exam that is why i have written uh, this i'm telling you this type of numerical now the next question is what are quantum numbers and degeneracy of the quantum level of energy is itna so again you have to tell the quantum numbers for answer to be 27 so this will come when nx ny and nz comes out to be 3 now is that calculate the minimum energy of a molecule in a cuboidal box of 1 liter capacity because you have to calculate the minimum energy means nx equals to ny equals to nz so my minimum energy would be when i put these as 1 and then Uh, the mass is because uh, calculate the minimum energy so my energy, now i have to calculate this value that what would be the energy this is the main expression i have written that is 3h square upon 8ma square now my mass is itna of nitrogen the mass of one molecule because he is saying nitrogen molecule we always have one mole so i'll divide 28 by avogadro's number this will give the mass of one molecule my planck's constant my volume is h cube because my volume was 1 liter already so if i take the cube root it will give you the edge length and then put all those values and calculate the energy so today 
we have uh, in these few lectures i have discussed about many things like in the starting i have discussed about what is the uh, that is if i uh, revise all those things with you that what we have done is was initially i have discussed that what was classical mechanics how the classical mechanics were discarded and we come up to the quantum mechanics and then we come up to the quantum mechanics what were the postulates of quantum mechanics before doing the postulates of quantum mechanics we have discussed about the operators we have also discussed about the operators which was the most important thing which we see and then uh, whenever a molecule always in a molecule always to study a molecule although in an atom in an atom uh, we have only translational motion we always discussed only the translational motion but in case of molecule because there are certain bonds and electrons and all those things that is why in case of uh, molecule we have translational energy rotational energy vibrational energy electronic energy so that is why we have different different chapters in case of molecules that is uh, we study translational motion in uh, just like uh, the example is that particle in a box so in the particle in a box i have discussed about particle in 1d box particle in 2d box particle in 3d box and i have also derived about the energy as well as the wave function of the 1d box 2d box as well as 3d box and the only thing which is left is uh, that is that is a free particle that is where there are no boundaries there is nothing like a and b that is when we have the length of the box as infinity there is no length of the box then what will happen to the particle that is a small topic which uh, which will take a bit uh, one session in fact so we'll discuss that free particle in the next session and then we'll try to jump on the rigid rotator that is a rotational motion of the molecule in the next session so thanks for today thank you Thank you. thank you so very much for giving us this productive session uh, where we discussed on the 2D box as well as on the 3D box and friends we believe that you have gathered lots of uh, information uh, through the session and we would like you to write to us at info.cec at nic.in this is the ID where you can post your questions as well as your feedbacks too. So ma'am uh, in next session as you said that we are going to cover uh, the free, free particles. particles and apart from that what else are we going to study we will start rigid rotator in we'll the first session we will do the particle a free particle and then in the next session we will start with rigid rotator so dear friends uh, as dr amitadua hustle said that uh, uh, we would be talking on free particles and rigid rotator so uh, keep watching us and keep a track as dr amitadua will be with us uh, very soon in our forthcoming sessions so Today we are taking your leave uh, with the note that we will be meeting and would be discussing more. Till then, take care. Goodbye. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you once you. again.